Hi there, folks. Today we're looking at simplifying square roots. Uh, generically, we're kind of looking at simplifying radicals, but we're going to focus on square roots. So radicals are kind of a, a bigger uh, concept. So under radicals, we have things like square roots, but there's also cube roots and fourth roots and fifth roots. So those are radicals. We're only going to do square roots uh, here today. OK, so there are two ways to simplify this. And uh, we're not going to simplify it the way we used to, where we kind of round it off to, to some decimal. We want to leave this in its exact form, which means we have to leave it in terms of the square root. But we want to simplify that square root as far as we can. All right. And so there's two ways to do this. The first way is utilizing the prime factorization. And prime factorization, you've probably seen this before, but maybe you don't remember the term. It's basically when we take a number and we break it down into as many numbers as possible using multiplication until we can't break any of the numbers down any further, okay? So uh, the expression of a number using multiplication of only prime factors, all right? And that's the technical term. We're just going to start splitting the thing up using multiplication until we literally can't split up any of the numbers anymore, all right? So we're going to create a number tree using the prime factorization. So we're essentially going to do the prime factorization, but we're going to do it look, uh, kind of in a tree type of format. Then we're going to identify pairs of common numbers. And what we're going to do is we're going to write those pairs of numbers on the outside of the radical symbol, so on the outside of the square root, all right? Anything that doesn't have a pair is going to stay underneath the square root. And the whole idea behind this concept is that square roots and squaring things are like opposites. They undo one another. So just like addition and subtraction undo one another, multiplication and division undo one another, um, squares and square roots undo one another. So raising something to the second power and taking the square root, those things cancel each other out. All right. And when you think about finding a pair of numbers, like let's say I found a pair of threes or something like that, for example. If I found a pair of threes, so two threes being multiplied, that's the same thing as three squared. And so the reason we kind of write a three on the outside is because we're imagining that the square and the square root, this guy cancels with the square root, so I'm only left with a three. All right. And that's the idea here behind finding the pairs. OK, so here's what this looks like. If I look at this guy again, I'm just going to start a factor tree, which means I just say, hey, what can I break 8 up into? All right. So in other words, 8 is the same thing as 2 times 4. That's it. And then I look at each of those numbers and say, can I break either of those up any further? Like the 2, can I break that down any further? Well, that'll be 2 times 1, but it's silly to write the 2 again. All right. So I leave it. It's a prime number. I can't uh, break it up any further. But the 4, I can break up into a 2 and a 2. All right. And then the last thing I do is any any uh, branch of this tree, I'm going to extend so that I have all of these written side by side. What happens is we start to lose track of numbers because this tree, uh, the different branches end all over the place. So we just extend the branches all the way down. Now I can see the prime factorization is two times two times two. See, that's the prime factorization. Those are as far as I can break this thing up. So now I look for pairs of number right here. Here's a pair of twos. So because I have a pair of twos, that pair of twos becomes a two on the outside of the square root. But then under the square root, I write anything that didn't have a pair. Well, this guy right here didn't have a pair, so I write him underneath the square root. So I get one two on the outside, and that came from the pair of twos that I had, and one two on the inside, and that came from the, the two that didn't have a pair. And that's it. All right, This thing is simplified as far as it can go. And if you were to plug the square root of 8 into a calculator versus plugging in 2 root 2 into the calculator, 2 times the square root of 2, you will get the exact same value because these two things are equivalent. This is just a simplified version of that square root of 8. Okay. Same thing with the next guy. If I just start breaking this thing up using a factor tree, so I'm going to say, hey, this is, uh, you know, most of us would probably say like 9 times 8, right? And then 9 is the same thing as 3 times 3. 8 is the same thing as 4 times 2. And 4 is the same thing as 2 times 2. And notice, some of those branches ended sooner uh, than that last one I had. So just extend them a little bit so that I have everything written side by side. See, now that's my prime factorization. That, that 3, 3, 2, 2, 2, that's my prime factorization. Now I circle the pairs. Ready? Here's a pair of 3s. So I'm going to write a 3 on the outside. Uh, there's also a pair of twos, so I'm going to put a two on the outside. 
And then there's one two that's all by itself, so he's going to stay on the inside. And as I do this, it's all multiplication. When I split up and made that factor tree, it was multiplication. So when I write those numbers on the outside, or if I have more than one number on the inside, it's still multiplication. And so what I would do is I would rewrite this as 6 root 2. And that's it. Okay? That's the prime factorization. That's how we use it with the square root. And again, what's happening is really 3 times 3 is 3 squared. Well, the square and the square root cancel out, so I'm just left with a 3. Okay? The pair of 2s is like 2 squared. The square and the square root cancel out, so I'm just left with a 2 on the outside. Okay? And then anything that I couldn't take the square root of it uh, of stays on the inside. Okay? If I look at this guy again, I break this thing up. Uh, and you might have to do a little guess and check here. Right away, you, you can tell that this thing's divisible by 2. Use a calculator to figure out if it's 2 times what. You know what I mean? So that's uh, actually 64. And then 64, you might know it, is 8 times 8. And then 8 is 4 times 2. And there's another 4 times 2. And then each of these is a 2 times 2. And see, this is what I'm talking about in terms of there's numbers all over the place. So take each branch that ended soon and extend it. Look at all these guys, okay? So that's my prime factorization. Start circling pairs. Here's a pair of twos. So I'm going to put a two on the outside. Another pair of twos. So I put another two on the outside. And again, it's multiplication. Another pair of twos. So I put another two on the outside. And then there's one two that's all by itself, so it stays on the inside. And so now two times two times two is at eight, so this is eight root two. And you might have noticed as we're kind of looking at this tree that we could have trimmed this tree a little bit. Right here, did you notice after this line, could I have circled those eights and said, hey, here's a pair of eights and then written on the, an eight on the outside with a two left on the inside? Okay, so look that for that kind of stuff. Even though our goal is the prime factorization, we can cut it short because the same concept still applies. If I have a pair of numbers, I can circle them and take them on to the outside. That's going to lead us to our next method for this thing. Okay, if I look at the next one, again, that four is just going to actually let me let me do my factor tree first. So let's see, that's five uh, times fifteen. And this is uh, 5 times 3. And now uh, extend this branch and looking for pairs. Here's a pair of 5s. Oh, sorry, I wanted to do that in red. There we go, a pair of 5s. So I put a 5 on the outside. But there was already a 4 on the outside. It's okay, it's still multiplication. It's all multiplication here. And then that 3 is all by itself, so he stays on the inside. And that's it. Okay, so that's how prime factorization works. That's how we're going to simplify these things, okay? If you have something like a fraction, you know, don't worry about it too much. We're just going to take the square root of each of these individually, and then I'll rewrite it as a fraction. So here, I'm going to do the square root of 8, but then I'll also do the square root of 49, uh, and then I'll rewrite it back as a fraction, okay? So here, let's do our factor tree. That's 4 times 2. This is 2 times 2. Extend that branch so I can see them all side by side. There's a pair of twos, so I read a two on the outside. There's a two all by itself, so I have a two on the inside. And now if I look at the next one, should I even bother doing a factor tree here? Hopefully when you look at the square root of 49, you say, wait, I already know what that is. Okay, so ignore what we just did today for a second and say, hey, what's the square root of 49? The answer is a seven. And see, we know that one because that's a perfect square. We already know how to take the square roots of those guys. The only thing we're trying to discover today is how do we take the square root of things that aren't perfect squares, all right, and leave them in an exact form. If it's a perfect square, you already know how to take the square root of it. Just take the square root, okay? But now as a fraction, let's see, that was 2 root 2 for the numerator and then 7 for the denominator, and that's it. Okay, so just like with our rules of exponents, all right, remember when we raised something to a power, we just did each of the, the numerator and denominator separately. It's the same thing here. We can take the square root, do the numerator and denominator separately, okay? Let's take a look at our second method. Our second method utilizes perfect squares, so it utilizes some of that knowledge we already know. Like, we already know how to take the square root of 49. It's a 7. 
We already know how to take the square root of 4. It's a 2. We already know how to take the square root of 9. It's a 3. We already know how to take the square root of 25. It's a 5. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to try to break the number into perfect squares because we already know how to do the square root of perfect squares. Okay? So here's our list of perfect square numbers. We've seen it. All right? We've seen it before. Uh, but 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, all right? And really, it's a good idea to start to try to recognize these numbers, okay? They come up a lot in math, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to find uh, perfect squares, divide evenly into the radicand. And uh, this is probably a new word I haven't mentioned. The radicand is just the thing under the square root. Okay, that's the number in the square root, okay? So just uh, keep that in mind. It's this guy right here. It's the thing that's inside there, okay? Whatever that is, that's called the radicand. So we're just looking for perfect squares that divide into that, and then we're going to take the square root of each perfect square. See, we, know, we already know how to take the square root, and it's really just like those fractions we just did where we take the square root of each of those things individually, numerator, denominator. Once I break this number up, I can take the square root of each thing individually. For example, if I look at something like this guy, the square root of 8, I'm looking for perfect squares, numbers from this list, that divide into 8. And hopefully as you look through this list, you see right away that 8 is divisible by 4, and 4 is right here on my list. See, 4 is a perfect square, okay? In other words, what we do is this. We say, hey, 8 is 4 times 2. But the thing is, we already know how to take the square root of uh, 4. And so what we're doing is we're just taking the square root of each of these individually. Watch this. If I do the square root of 4 and then separately do the square root of 2, well, we already know the square root of 4 is a 2, right? But the square root of 2, we can't really do. I just leave it the way it is, okay? I don't know what that one is off the top of my head, but now this is my answer. And here's how I usually display that. I usually just uh, put a circle around the thing I'm taking the square root of and say, hey, the square root of that is a 2. I couldn't take the square root of the other thing, and that's it, okay? Either method is acceptable. This one, as you can see, requires a lot less work to be shown, but it's harder to think about, all right? The factor tree is easy in terms of the amount of thinking we have to do, but it requires more work, okay? This is less work, but requires more thinking, okay? Something like this guy, looking for perfect squares that divide evenly into 72. Again, when you look at this list, the first one you probably see is 9, okay? So like in this guy, I would say, hey, the square root of this guy, that's 9 times 8. But then you got to keep going. Look for more perfect squares, like here. 8, we just did that one. That was 4 times 2. And see, now I know the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is a 3. So I put it on the outside. The square root of 4 is a 2. I put it on the outside. And this guy that's left just stays on the inside. So that's going to be a 6 root 2, okay? And here's the interesting thing about this. There is a larger perfect square that divides evenly into 72. And so if you're using this method, it benefits you to find the biggest perfect square. That's actually 36 times 2. And now watch this. The square root of 36 is a 6. Isn't that what I have on the outside? And then the 2 is still trapped, and that's what I have on the inside. Okay, so again, you're just looking for things that you already know how to take the square root of that you can take out of this uh, square root, okay? This one, the perfect square that divides evenly into 128, the biggest one, and really you'd probably arrive there by guess and check anyway, is a 64, 2 times 64. 64 is on our list. Well, what is the square root of 64? The square root of 64 is an 8, and that 2 is still trapped. And it goes back to that factor tree I did on the previous page. These are the same examples from the previous page. I don't know if you've noticed yet, okay? But when we did that factor tree, we saw that pair of 8s. And I said, hey, couldn't we stop there and just take the pair of 8s? That's the same thing as taking the square root of 64, okay? Because 8 times 8 is 8 squared. The square and the square root cancel out. It's like taking the square root of 64, okay? So the factor tree is having the same effect, but it's showing it more literally, okay? If I look at this guy... Again, perfect square that divides evenly into 75. The biggest one I can think of is a 25. This is 25 times 3. And now right here, the square root of 25 is a 5. So I had a 4 out here. Now I have a 5 out here as well from the square root. And now the 3 is the only thing I can't take the square root of 
So now let's see, that's a 20 square root of 3. Okay, so I'm just looking for perfect squares that divide evenly into this thing, all right? And then once again, if I look at this guy, and then looking for perfect squares that divide evenly into this, it might be tough. You might need to use a calculator and do a little bit of guess and check on this thing. I believe the, the biggest one on this one is 16, okay? Uh, 16 times 6, all right? And now the square root of 16, well, I know the square root of 16. The square root of 16 is a 4, but I can't do the square root of 6, so I just leave it as the square root of 6. Okay? I'm taking the square root of each of those individually. If I look in the next one, again, a perfect square that divides evenly into 24, I think the only one is 4. It's 4 times 6. And I know the square root of 4, so the square root of 4 is a 2. So it's going to join this guy on the outside. But I can't take the square root of 6, so I just leave it as the square root of 6. I'm taking the square root of each of those individually. The square root of 4 gave me the 2. The square root of 6 stays as the square root of 6. Okay? And then, of course, yeah, I can simplify this a little bit. That's a 6 root 6. Okay? This guy, same kind of thing as what happened on the front. I'm going to do the square root of each of these individually. All right? So on this one, I'm going to do the square root of 32 and the square root of five separate, or the square root of 25 separately. Uh, uh, 32, the biggest perfect square that divides in there is 16. And now I know the square root of 16. The square root of 16 is a four, but the square root of two is just the square root of two. All right. Here, this one's already a perfect square. The square root of 25, I already know that one. That's five. And so this fraction becomes four root two over five. I'm just taking the square root of each of those numbers individually, all right? So I need numbers that I already know how to take the square root of. And then this last one, same kind of thing. Here's the square root of 12, and then I'll do the square root of 81. Again, the square root of 81, you already know how to do. That's a 9. The square root of 12, well, there's a 4 in there. It's 4 times 3, and you know how to do the square root of 4. What's the square root of 4? The square root of 4 is a 2. And now I do also do the square root of the 3, which I can't simplify at all. And so that's it. It becomes 2 root 3 over 9. Okay? So when we're simplifying these things, we can either do our factor tree, the prime factorization, all right? And we look for pairs. Every time we find a pair, it goes to the outside. Anything that doesn't have a pair stays on the inside. All right. When we're doing the perfect square method, we just look for perfect squares that divide into the thing. And then I take the square root of each perfect square. So once I have it split up, I'm taking the square root of each thing under the root. And it just so happens I know how to take the square root of some of those things. So I write down those answers. And then whatever's left under the radical is just stays as a square root. Okay.